Hello everyone, welcome back to your next installment, day five of Top Dog Tober. We are going to get diving straight in today's question type. It's a maths lesson, but before we do, as always, I just wanted to remind you of the fantastic offer we currently have on our website resources. Now, every single week we release English, verbal reasoning, maths and non-verbal reasoning premium lessons for you to have a look at. You can only get them on our website. You can download a homework which helps you to practice exactly what we've been going through in each and every lesson. And as if that's not enough, we've recorded a homework walkthrough as well so you can check your answers properly. All you need to do is click in the link down below in the description and the pinned comment and put Vote Dylan because Vote Dylan will mean that you get 15% off and you're also helping me out because every single person who signs up using my code gives me a point and if I win and I beat Hayden, he's doing the forfeit. I don't want to go anywhere near that hot sauce. Please so use my code. Watch my videos, every little helps. Yesterday, you had a look at counting cubes. We also call it counting blocks because they're not always cubes. But in this case, I love this question. So let's have a look. Think about what you put in the comments yesterday for this one. I'm gonna show you now that the answer is 15. Now, this is full of tricks. I love this one. Don't assume it's a full line. We can see four at the front. One, two, three, four. We know there's four more behind that because it's holding up the four on the top. So that's four plus four plus four is 12. We know there's one here, 13. And there has to be one below it holding it up. So that's 14. And we can see this one here is 15. What we cannot do is just say, well, I bet there's one behind there. I bet there's one hiding. No, there is never any hiding cubes or blocks only hiding if we can see what it's holding up just like here with block 13. So the answer is 15. Well done if you managed to get that one. But let's go into now the real thing, the real lesson, my lesson, none of this Hayden nonsense. And we're taking a look at maths. Now this is powers of 10. Really, really, really important thing to master. Okay. We want to be excellent at multiplying and dividing numbers by 10, 100 and 1000 because of conversion facts. So here is your basic place value chart. We go up to 10,000s on the left and we go past the decimal place, past whole numbers into parts of whole numbers to tenths. We can also write that as a fraction, hundredths, of course, it's the same thing, but with a hundred as the denominator and even thousands. Every single time we jump to the right, we divide by 10, we get 10 times smaller. Every time we jump to the left, we're going to be getting 10 times bigger. So in our place value system, 10 is a really integral number. We go larger to the right, smaller, uh, sorry, larger to the left, smaller to the right. So taking a look at these basic numbers here then, 50. So we can write this one out to start with, 50. Now I've got 50 there of my digits. How can I move 50 to make it 10 times bigger? Well, we're gonna move them up one place. If we make it 10 times bigger like that, we put in a placeholder and we get 500. So 50 times 10, 10 times bigger is 500. Now the thing that often tricks people out is if we start with 50 and now we want to make it 10 times smaller, well, it's a simple case of just moving those digits down. When we go past that decimal place, we can put it in to help us 5.0 or just five. Now when there's a zero on the end, it just drops off. It's absolutely fine. So 620, we've got 620, 10 times bigger. We put another placeholder in, 6,200. Again, 10 times smaller will just be 62. Where it gets interesting now is 75 and 30.5. So I want you to pause the video and have a go yourself. See if you can get two answers. One is 10 times bigger, one being 10 times smaller for each of those. Okay, so 75, 10 times bigger is quite straightforward. It's going to be 750 with a placeholder at the end. 10 times smaller though, just wanna draw this out because if I have 75 in my place value table, if I know that I'm going 10 times smaller, it's going to move down one place. But just remember, we have gone past the decimal. So put the decimal in, it's 7.5. We can't just get rid of that five like we got rid of the zero, the placeholder, we must keep it there. Same down here. Do not forget this zero. We don't get rid of it because it's in the middle of our number. There are digits surrounding it. We can't just drop it. So 10 times bigger would be 305 because we move all of those digits up one place. I'll show you right now because if I write down 30.5 and I put my decimal place there, 30.5, I'm going to move up. The decimal place, of course, will not be relevant there anymore. It would move here. So that's 305. Now, if I want to move those places down, I'm gonna make sure that I simply move them, there's 30.5, one place down, 
3.05. Again, no decimal there, but we must make sure we put a decimal in the right place. So 3.05. That's the basics, guys. You need to know that. Multiplying by 10, shift the digits up. Dividing by 10, shift the digits down. What about if we divide or multiply by 100 or even 1,000? Well, here's our key fact. 10 times 10 is 100. We all know that. So we can say that multiplying by 100 means moving two place value columns because all we're doing is multiplying by 10 and then multiplying by 10 again. That's the same as multiplying by 100. So to multiply by 100, we don't move one place, we move two. And there's a really nice hint for us because when we multiply by 10, we move one place and there's one zero in 10. When we multiply by 100, we move two places and there are two zeros in 10 because it's 10 times 10. Uh, two zeros in 100 because it's 10 times 10. And what about 1000? How many places would we move for that? You guessed it, it would be three because 1000 is the same as 10 times 10 times 10. So a really nice hint there, we can simply look at the number of placeholder digits, the number of zeros that we have in what we're multiplying by, that's how many places we move up and down our place value chart. So we we'll need to have a go at these questions, do exactly as I've been doing previously. You can use the place value chart if you like to write them down and then shift those digits. If you're multiplying, you're getting larger. If you're dividing, you're getting smaller. You know how many places you move because you look at what you're multiplying or dividing by. Have a go at this one, guys. We'll go through them afterwards. Okay, so 17 multiplied by 100. I know for a fact that's going to be moving up two places, which will give me two placeholders, 1,700. You could even say 1,700, it's the same number. Eight divided by 100. For this one, I'm going to show you what this will look like. We've got a eight there, an eight rather, in the ones column. So what am I going to do that? Well, I'm dividing by 100, so I'm going to shift it down two places, one, two. But if we look there, it doesn't really help us out. Well, let's drop down that decimal because the decimal never moves and we put a placeholder in the tenths and we're also going to put a placeholder in the ones and we see now the answer is 0 0.08. Awesome. Next one, 4.06 multiplied by 1,000. Again, I'm going to write it out just to prove to you. 4.06, I'm not going to draw the decimal because we know it goes there. I'm going to draw it at the end because I know the decimal does not move with my digits. So multiply by 1,000, that's one, two, three places larger. So now I'm going to go to my digits. One, two, three places larger. You might be tempted to put 406. Don't be because look, the ones column needs that placeholder and then we stop when we get to the decimal. The answer here is 4,060. Nice little easy way to check. If you just multiplied four by 1,000, you'd have 4,000, so you know your number has to start with 4,000. And then down here, 1,400 divided by 1,000, move it down three places, you're gonna get 1.4. If you do that, well done on those there. We have to be good at this, guys. This leads into so much of our learning in maths, especially conversions and measurement, which comes up a lot in the 11 plus. So. A little bit of reasoning now, a little bit of thinking. You're going to be putting in these boxes here, 10, 100, or 1,000, whichever one fits to complete the sentence. And then here, and these two, you're going to be putting in a number, okay? So we can almost split this in half. Have a go, read it carefully. I'm gonna go through the answers after. Test yourself now. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at that for me. 1,510 is how many times the size of 151? Well, it's just one place bigger, so it's just 10 times the size. 500 is how many times bigger than 0 0.5? Again, we can test this by putting 0 0.5 in here into our place value, and all we can do then is move it to get to 500. What would we end up at? That's one place, five ones, two places, five tens, three places, 500 and if you wanted to you could prove it with the placeholder so we moved up three places one two three so 10 times 10 times 10 that means that it is 1000 times bigger because we moved it three places down here something is one tenth the size of 92 so we have to take 92 and split it into 10 equal groups divide by 10 in other words so that's 9.2 and then something is one hundredth the size of 300. Again, we're gonna take 300, we're going to divide it by 100, 
and then we're gonna end up with just three as the answer. Again, guys, fantastic work if you got those. Not only do we practice actually doing it, doing the maths with the place value columns and the tables, but we're also doing some reasoning there to figure out what goes in each of those boxes. So, last thing I want you to have a go at with me is a function machine. So input blank times 100 divided by 1000, and then we get the output. I put 710 into the function machine. What comes out the other end? Have a go, we'll talk through it afterwards. So one way to solve this is simply put 710 in and go one step at a time in the function machine. Multiply by 100, that's going to give us 710, but now 100 times bigger is two more placeholders, so that's 71,000. Then it's going to divide by 1,000, so we're going to shift that those digits down three places now because there are three zeros in 1,000, that helps us out and we end up with 71, okay? I'm gonna show you a shortcut though. So if you've got C, well done, it's the right answer, but here's a shortcut. Multiplying by 100 and then dividing by 1000, we can actually cancel out some of these zeros here, these powers of 10. So let's cancel out one pair of zeros, let's cancel out another. So this function machine, multiplying by 100 and dividing by 1000 is the same as just dividing by 10. So we're gonna move up two places when we times by 100, and then down three places when we divide by 1,000. So we might as well have just canceled out two of those moves and just moved down one place. So I'll show you that again. If we have a number here, multiply it by 10, one, two places bigger. So now we're here. And now we're going to divide it by 1,000. So that's one, two, three places down. Well, I could have just canceled all of that and just simply moved down one place to begin with, which is divide by 10. So you can always look for shortcuts like that and I would recommend doing that when it comes to this question. So you can just solve it. You can put 85 into the machine and see what you get at the end, or you could be trying to look for those shortcuts, guys. But whatever you do, let us know down in the comments below what answer you get, and Hayden will be back tomorrow to give you the answer. But remember, share and watch my videos on repeat. Every thousand views gets me another point. Every sign up gets me another point. Let's make Hayden take the hot sauce, okay? I'll see you next time.